This episode of the Sleuthcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company located in Harrisburg, Ohio. They are fair trade certified USD or USDA organic. Integrity is their core value to do the right thing every, even when no one is looking. They are, again, they are high premium batch, so they get their high quality coffee beans directly from countries such as Colombia, Brazil, Honduras, Ethiopia, and much, much more. Come in K-Cups, gift cards available, and as always, free shipping over $50. Be sure to check them out over at ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that is ironbeancoffee.com, where they are America's local coffee roaster. Still getting used to not immediately coming in with another ad read right there. <laughs> yep, no worries. I was like, oh, I should be saying something. And then I realized I have nothing to say except other than like, hi, YouTube audience and 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 hi, Discord audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Kyle, we have a lot to get to today. So let's rejoin our audio listeners and get this thing started. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right over here, Jared. How are you doing today? You know, I uh, I don't know. I got nothing to say. Like, I I I typically like to say something right there, but I blanked. So, <laughs> I guess nothing. How am I doing today? Poof. Space. Yeah, that, that, that's how that's I, what I got. That's how I feel. I've traveling for work again and yeah i'm just tired <laughs> yeah <laughs> i had to do our uh, patreon exclusive episode sans kyle um you know and kyle what, what i learn anytime i have to do an episode without kyle and it's just like me and the uh, discord chatters is really that kyle's the glue of this podcast <laughs> <laughs> Because without Crazy him, glue? my ADHD just goes poof, and we're Crazy literally glue? just googling stuff on the show. Crazy glue. Ah, uh, <laughs> that joke's just for us, <laughs> and that's okay. All right, Kyle. All right, uh, so yeah, where where do you want to start? Uh, we have coaching changes at Ohio State and elsewhere. Um, there's just some like bowl season pre-bowl season stuff we have recruiting updates we have a basketball game to talk about where would you like to start well let's start with the coaching changes i think i think that's the big thing recently that everybody wants to talk about here so let's let's hit it off strong here ohio state hiring jim knowles yep. as their future defensive coordinator first thoughts on that jared uh i i think this is an excellent hire um you know, I, I had spoke about, you know, maybe Mike Tressel down at Cincinnati because he's he's from like the Ohio State coaching tree. Um, but I also said that I don't necessarily know that Mike Tress would be like in that first tier of, of people you'd go after. Uh, Knowles is in that first tier of guys you go after. Uh, this is a guy who, if you if you look at his track record, he comes into places like Duke, for example, um, I, you know, I was joking around in the discord. I said he, he came into Oklahoma state, a team famously all offense and no defense and turned them into a defensive juggernaut. And then he went into Duke, a team famous for being terrible and turned out a really good defense. And you know, sometimes with head coaching, people will say, oh, well, imagine what he can, you know, oh, he was a really good coach at group of five school. Imagine what he can do at a place like Ohio State. And with head coaching, I don't necessarily always think that translates. But with coordinating, I think it does translate. So I, I, I think the question we have to ask is. Or maybe. 
does it tra- does it always translate with defensive coordinators? Uh, you know, what happens when you give a guy like Knowles who, you know, you go into Oklahoma State if you're Knowles. The first year wasn't great. The second year was better. The third year he was killing it. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the sort of track record you had with Knowles at Oklahoma State. Now you hope that at a place like Ohio State with the talent already in place. And and make no mistake, anyone who might think otherwise, the talent is already in place. Just just age all of the freshmen. Just just age the roster. You're going to age the roster. You're going to lose some guys who you might be better off losing. And you have a bunch of redshirt freshmen who are about to become sophomores. A your yeah, uh, a bunch of freshmen who are about to also become sophomores because <laughs> I don't know how many of them actually got uh, redshirted this year. And, and then you have a brand new crop of players coming in in this 2022 class, which we'll be talking a little bit about later. Mm-hmm. The talent's already there. Don't worry about that. Just don't worry about that. Ohio State will be fine talent-wise. And I, I think this is what you wanted. You wanted a guy like Knowles to come in, be like the defensive coordinator, and then take a guy like Matt Barnes, who did a really good job doing what he could with what he was given and the circumstances he was put in. And, you know, maybe Barnes gets a promotion to like a co-DC, definitely number two underneath Knowles, but like a co-DC or something along a bigger role, potentially. Yeah. Because you can't blame Barnes for what the defense was. No. Nah, yeah, you, you really can't though. No, I, I like the hire. I, I really do. And you look at the you look at the numbers here, Jared, like Oklahoma State did really well. Yeah. Like really well defensively. Not not just not just the oh, they're in the big twelve, they they let up so many points very, very well for Oklahoma State here. Like they, they only let up more than twenty five points once all year. And how many times did Ohio State do that this year? <laughs> um, a quite a bit, quite a bit there. So, yeah, definitely. Um, oh, I apologize twice, but I skipped that Iowa State game there. But yeah, it was. Yeah, no, I think this is a great. Right. This is a great hire. I'm there really were two forward. games in which. They gave up 24 points. And then Oklahoma, they gave up 33 points. Uh, yep. So th- those were their worst performances defensively, which which is pretty good. Yep. Right? That's pretty good. Um, pretty there good, were yeah. three instances this season in which Oklahoma State gave up no touchdowns. One shutout and two games in which Kansas and West Virginia only got field goals. And again, this is at Oklahoma State, a program famous for having no defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Buckeye Esquire asks about um, does Noah's add anything to national recruiting? Not really, honestly, not really. If you look at all of the recruits, he really he like signs. Yeah. It's not really that, not really that much. He's, he's more of a, your in-game coordinator, which is what he should be. He's not, he's not, he's not a position coach going out there to get players for his position. He's a, he's a true defensive coordinator. I'll say this though. He's very popular among his players. And if you go watch, you know, there's lots of videos of him out there. You can go watch. He's an engaging, entertaining uh, filled with personality guy. So if you, you know, maybe why wasn't he recruiting well? Well, because of Duke. Well, because Oklahoma State, not a known defensive commodity. So you're not getting the best defensive players in the country to come to Oklahoma State. You're not getting the best players in the country, period, to come to Duke. You know, so if you have a guy with an engaging personality, who's obviously popular among his players. And now he walks in with an Ohio state logo on his polo. You probably get a bit of a recruiting bump there. Mm -hmm. Yep. By the way, I I found the actual numbers on this. This is uh, from Patrick Murphy uh, over at buck nuts. Um, 
when he took over Oklahoma State's defense, it was ranked 112th in the country. The next year, 82nd in the country. In 2020, 44th in the country. This year, they were the third best defense. Third best defense in the country. That's progress. That is progress. And that's what, that's what we want to see moving into the 2022 season. Oklahoma State this year, first in sacks in the country, first in tackles for a loss in the country, second in the country at uh, defending third downs. Uh, by the way, this is coming from a tweet from Dan Hope over at 11 Warriors. Uh, third in yards per game, fourth in yards allowed per play, which is which is the real statistic here. Let's not get too caught up on, on yards per game. Yards per play is the real statistic here. Um, eighth in points allowed per game, which is, of course, the, st the stat that really super duper actually matters. Mm -hmm. This is a fantastic hire. Um, I, I know that he doesn't have the same name cachet as like Brent Venables or Kevin Steele or, you know, some of the other big names out there, but this is a great hire. He's from Pennsylvania, so he knows Ohio State's recruiting base, you know, whether because it's, it's it's Western PA. So that'll help Ohio State out in the, you know, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Maryland, Delaware area of the country. Um, and also, of course, Pennsylvania, right? Ohio State's been pulling some really good players out of Philly lately. Yep. I'm not worried about the recruiting part of it. No, I guess I'm that's what I'm either. trying to say. Yep. All right. Um, just some, just some um, miscellaneous stuff, I guess. Pre bowl stuff. Uh, Stroud, a Heisman finalist. There's no doubt in my mind that was going to happen. Now right. will he win it? I no. I, no. no. No, I, I do. Not, well, and you know, Heisman voting is stupid. It's really, really very stupid. So, the only chance he really had. If you watch, if you look at the way Heisman votes happen, they get broken up geographically. The only real chance I think he had is if there was like a bunch of Southern guys all splitting votes and then he got all the Big Ten votes. But Hutchinson's in there as well. So that'll split up the Midwest votes. Uh, it's it's going to yeah. be young. I, I don't think there's any doubt in that. Right. Correct. Right, yeah. Uh, Noah Ruggles, Jared. Noah No Struggle Ruggles named named ESPN's first team All American. There you go. That's what one missed field goal all year will do for you. Yeah, led 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 the entire nation in total points with like eighteen for nineteen on field goals. Great great season for the for the North Carolina transfer. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if we fully realized how important that transfer was going to be when it happened, but it turned out to be very important. Very. Uh, and some, something interesting too, to keep an eye out. Uh, Wilson still undecided if he's going to be playing in the Rose bowl. He's still kind of weighing his odds. Should he play or should he get ready for the draft and all that? So if he does decide to um, skip out on the Rose bowl, I'm fine with it. I mean, he's got to yeah. do, he's got to do what's best for him and yeah. Support him all the way. No, I don't want, I don't want to see any Buckeye fans giving him crap for no abandoning the team or leaving early. He, he's got to do what, what's best for him. Right. And, and I do know that some NFL teams really don't like it. Some NFL teams also don't care when, when yep. the goal game gets, gets. And we, and we've seen too, where, they, somebody plays and the worst thing happens. Yeah. I, uh, we saw it when Ohio state played uh, Notre Dame. I can't yep. remember the linebacker's name, but uh, blew his ACL in that game. And it was it, terrible for him. Uh, I mm -hmm. mean, he, 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 I think he still gets ended up getting drafted by the Cowboys. Um, I, and I think ends up still having a pretty decent career. Although I'll be honest, I, ha I don't really, I haven't followed up on, on that recently. But I think he was yep. doing pretty okay. Yep. Uh, by the, I think the only reason why people really get mad at players for skipping bowl games, in my opinion, is that 
they aren't participating in the lie. <laughs> and the lie is, is that these bowl games matter. They don't. I'm sorry. I, I know there's a, I know there's an older contingent of Ohio State fans who still put the Rose Bowl up on the pedestal. Uh, I am not one of those people. It's just, it's just bragging rights, honestly. It's bragging rights and bringing home a trophy. Yeah, uh, it's. It, I mean, it is what it is. It's 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 a it's an exhibition mm -hmm. game. Let's just say let's call it what it is. It's an exhibition game, and as far as Garrett Wilson specifically, quite frankly, I'd I'd love to get a chance to to get some of these new receivers on the field. I, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Garrett Wilson can go. Um, mm -hmm. If it was a different position that I felt like would really hurt Ohio State, I might feel different. But Alave and Wilson, they can both go. Go get ready for the NFL, guys. Thank you for your service. Um, let's get Fleming on the field. Let's let's see if JSN can play an outside wide receiver spot instead of the slot spot. You know, let's get some of these wide receivers on the field. Let's go. Yeah. And now, if you're like a team like North Carolina, where their quarterback's thinking of missing their bowl game, that's a bigger that's a bigger issue when you got your one main right uh star there and then leave and then you're like okay <laughs> but yeah th yeah just like what Jared said Wilson will be missed but it's not going to be a drastic um drop I'm not saying that Wilson's not good in, at all right but, right right yeah it's just the talent's there well, and if it's uh, both of the wide receivers, that is a pretty big drop only because of experience. You'd have two wide receivers on the field who didn't, who yeah. have not bringing a lot of snaps in against a Utah defense that's pretty good. But let's all keep in mind that it's all a lie, that none of this matters. Bowl games are exhibitions, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Um, I think we should take a quick ad break here, Jared. And then we'll yeah. get into some recruiting and then talk about the um, the basketball game, not the one that's about to happen right now, Jared, as we're recording, the one prior to that. Oh, we, we got like 40 minutes, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company. Cal told you why, uh, who and why they, who and why they are. I, you know, words are tough sometimes, you guys. Uh, but, but. Kyle, well, I gave you a breakdown of the company. Let's let's talk about a specific coffee. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is let everyone know that Dylan's Grog, the uh, house Irish grog uh, available from the Iron Bean Coffee Company, is back in stock. I think the last time we uh, we checked, it was out of stock. So that, that Irish grog back in stock, uh, go get yourself a bag. Um, and it looks like the, the whole family of... The whole family of flavored coffees back in stock, the vanilla hazelnut, the salted caramel mocha, the cinnamon roll, which I know was out for a minute, uh, the butter pecan, the uh, peanut butter chocolate, and the banana foster. The banana foster was out of stock for a minute, but it is now back in stock. Um, taking a quick peek around, uh, the sampler still out of stock. The bourbon, guys, I told you that bourbon barrel aged coffee. I told you that wasn't going to last long. Guess what? It's gone. If you want to get these coffees, you need to jump on them, especially some of the seasonals. Uh, if we're talking about uh, the the seasonals, the, the flavored ones specifically, the white chocolate peppermint available. Uh, it is available. It is seasonal. If you want to pick up that white chocolate peppermint, you should probably do that here soon. And uh, Kyle, I think that that's enough plugging of the coffees, I think. Uh, so if you want to find your new favorite coffee, head on over to ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle, do you want to do some some quick recruiting updates or do you want to talk about the yeah, basketball let's, game? Let's, let's do some recruiting here. We're going to we're going to talk a lot more about that on these next two episodes. We're going to next next Monday's episode, we're going to preview the um, early signing day and then and then catch us back here as we record Wednesday. If you're a fellow um, Patreon, we'll go ahead and um, talk about the uh, the early signing day and then post this on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll 
we'll be doing our final mock class on Monday as a, you know, a method of previewing the early signing period, which, by the way, I saw something today that the Big 12 commissioner says that there is discussions of pushing the early signing period back into January. Which is only like a month ahead of standard signing day. So why don't we just get rid of early signing day? You make too it's, much sense, Jared. It's it, well, we can't just get rid of early signing day. We've had it for like a whole six years. Like it's a failed experiment, guys. We tried an experiment. It failed. Let's go back to the way we did it before. Don't move it back. Move it back is just like, well, I don't want to admit that we messed up. Shut up. Admit that you messed up. <laughs> it's okay to mess up. It's okay. It's yeah. okay to try something. It's okay to say, we tried it. It didn't work. And and go back to the old way. It's fine. It's okay. But point is, we'll be doing uh, our final mock draft of the 2022. Well, maybe not. I guess it depends upon how much intrigue is left when it comes to uh, standard signing day. But probably our last mock draft of the of the 2022 class coming on Monday. But uh, here's some quick news items before we get to there. Uh, number one, Ohio State having some problems with safeties. Uh, it was believed by many, myself included, that Ohio State was going to be picking up two really nice safeties in this class. Um, but things change. Uh, things change. Um, when Lincoln Riley went out to USC, Ohio State went from absolutely getting the Branch brothers, uh, who both play at Bishop Gorman uh, in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, the elder brother is is uh, Zion. The younger brother is Zach. Um, the the older brother, the safety. The younger brother, the wide receiver. It was absolutely believe they were both coming to Ohio state. Um, they aren't Lincoln Riley went to USC. I think they, they always wanted to go to USC. They are, you know, despite the fact that they play at the magnet, that is Bishop Gorman, they're California kids. So they, it, the, the equation changed at USC. So they, so they're going to USC. This isn't Ohio state messing something up. This isn't Ohio state failing. This is just a direct result of Lincoln Riley going to USC, USC having some actual hope, some actual momentum. And these two kids who wanted to end up at USC anyway are now going to they they have enough belief to actually go. Does Ohio have a Bishop Gorman sun card asks? Uh, not not to the Bishop Gorman level. Uh, there are a couple magnet schools that are starting up in Ohio that have started up in Ohio that are trying to replicate what they do uh, and what some of the other schools around uh, Mater Day in California, of course. Uh, there's a couple of these schools down in Florida. Uh, no, we're not talking about Bishop Sycamore. Uh, Buck, Sic Buckeye Sycamore? Bishop. Bishop? Sycamore. It wasn't Bishop Sycamore? Okay, yeah. Uh, no, we, we are not talking about that. So, uh, <laughs> Sun Card, not yet, and maybe not ever, or maybe not for the foreseeable future, but there, there are people trying to create these, what are essentially sports academies, uh, yeah. the high school sports academies. Mm -hmm. So, with uh, the Branch so, Brothers going away, Jared, what, what's, what's the good news for Ohio State fans? Well, there's a, uh, well, don't worry. Uh, there's an amazing safety uh, right here in the Midwest. Uh, his name is Nwankba, and Ohio State is absolutely going to get... What's that? Ah, he committed to Iowa today. Uh, once again, I really just think that... I really just think that the equation changed on the Iowa side. This wasn't Ohio State failing. This wasn't Ohio State messing up. Although the uncertainty in the coaching room, uh, I think, contributed here. It was not the deciding factor. But, mm -hmm. you know, when there are rumors that the entire defensive coaching staff might get turned over, that's going to give some defensive players pause. 
Uh, and, but I think it was just that Iowa was really good this year. He's from Iowa. He gets a chance to take the program from a really good program that makes the best with the talent they have to stay at home and maybe try and get some other kids to come as well and be the hometown hero and maybe try and get Iowa up to the next level. I don't think he's going to do that. Um, but he's an amazingly skilled player. I was very good at uh, player development. If he, uh, you know, he'll be fine. Uh, he'll be fine. That's, uh, you know, he'll be yep. fine at Iowa. So, yeah, that's another miss for Ohio State in the safety room. Good news, however, Kyle. Um, Let's hear it. From Pickerington, uh, Sonny Styles, uh, maybe the premier member of the uh, Ohio uh, speaking just as like Ohio high school, the Ohio class of 2023 is reclassifying and joining the 2022 class and therefore will be at Ohio state. Uh, he, he's going to not only, he's not only going to reclassify, he's going to enroll early. So, you know, Sonny, most people see him as a, most people see him as a safety, but he's could potentially end up in that bullet position. If the bullet position is still a new thing under a new defensive coordinator, uh, but uh, is, is definitely like a walk-up safety, a bullet, a walk-up safety, what we used to call strong safeties back in the day. Um, that that's, that's his skill set, And with losing branch and with losing and Wonkpa, you know, it, it is good for Ohio State that that Sonny Styles is going to show up to campus early. Now, generally speaking, I I don't know how I feel about these kids skipping their senior year of high school. Like I have mixed emotions about that um, and it becoming a trend and all of that. Um, you know, it's been happening for a while. It's been happening for a while, but it's it's happening with more frequency now. Um and you know, I, I'm not their, I'm not their dad. It's not my role to be their dad. I just, we're not talking about Hello Kitty today, Austin. Uh, but I, you know, I just, I, I want, you know, I, I care about these kids as, as humans, and I, I just generally have concerns about their mental health, their whatever else about, you know, maybe regrets about you know, growing up too quick and whatnot, uh, as far as leaving high school early and coming to play college football. Uh, now as far as like the mental health and homesickness and all that goes, he's, a, he's already a central Ohio kid. So this is not Quinn Ewers moving from Texas to Ohio on a whim. He's from central Ohio already. He is going to stay at home. He is, he's going to be fine. Like it's, it, this is, this was a well thought out long term, you know, the, a lot of thought went into this. He's not leaving home. Uh, this is not a Quinn Ewers situation. Sonny Styles. Uh, do you know Austin that Sonny Styles is reclassifying? Okay. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Some, some other, other news here, uh, Ohio State passing on um, uh, Elias, Elias Ricks. Ricks. Yeah, um, and... he is, uh, will Styles be redshirted, Buckeye Zach asks. Um, I mean, I don't think he's reclassifying to get redshirted. Now, that being, you know, the Quinn Ewer situation was stupid. All, all That entire situation was stupid from the get-go. That should have never happened, but I, I digress. Um, he'll play. Will he start? I don't think so, but will he play? Yes, he will play. He's incredibly good. Um, the, yeah, Elias Ricks uh, transfer from LSU. Ohio State, like on a Sunday, Ohio State was all about him. They were going to pursue him. Uh, and then on a Monday, they were out. Ohio State's choosing, they were out. Um, yeah. By the way, just real quick. If we're talking about LSU and cornerbacks, Corey Raymond, the longtime uh, cornerbacks coach and 
what seemed like a staple of the LSU program uh, ha- is uh, going to Florida. Didn't think I'd see the day where he would leave, where he would leave Ohio State, or excuse me, where he would leave Louisiana State. But he has. He's going to Florida, uh, which I think just goes to prove that no one wants to work for Brian Kelly. There, I said it. <laughs> no one wants to work for no one with better options wants to work for Brian Kelly. No, no, Austin. No, I would not. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's a lot of talk and a lot of rumor about why Ohio State decided to pass on Elias Ricks. Um, there was fear that existing young talent would move on. There were concerns about Ricks's injury situations uh is maybe being a bit too injury prone and they're just we'll call them uh locker room culture concerns and and leave that at that uh there 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 were uh culture disruption concerns Mm -hmm. yep uh oh okay that your 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 spell your 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 edit made a lot of sense there Austin. And, the, and the last thing here, um, offensive tackle Miles Fraser, um, who is leaving FIU for greener pastures. Yeah, uh, offensive offensive tackle from Florida International made the freshman uh, All American team, which you know you don't normally get uh, freshman All Americans from schools like Florida International. Uh, that's that's not a thing that happens. So uh, he decided to capitalize on on this and went into the transfer portal. Kyle, within a week of entering the transfer portal, he had 28 scholarship offers from different schools. That's funny. He has three. He's an offensive tackle with three years of eligibility left. Uh, Ohio, uh, Ohio State's already been to his home. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Uh Over, I think at this point, over 30 schools, 30 some schools have offered. um, Ohio State's already done an in home visit. I have no idea. Like, I'm not making any promises one way or the other, but uh, it's an interesting situation to watch where, you know, most of the time when we have kids entering the transfer portal, it's because they couldn't start somewhere. Uh, Miles Frazier is a guy entering the transfer portal because he's looking to upgrade. Very interesting situation and uh, very interesting to watch. Yep. All right. Anything else? To the recruiting, recruiting news here, Jared? Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma tight end Austin Stogner is also looking to transfer, and Ohio State might be a early leader in the clubhouse. He's already picked up uh, two crystal balls, one from Bill Kerlick, who is a Bucknuts insider, and Chris Hummer, who's a national writer over at 24-7 Sports, as possible destinations. Uh, Ohio State, you know, looking maybe for some tight end help. Uh, Austin Stogner, 6'6", 235, might be on his way to Ohio State, maybe. Yeah. It's early. It's, we'll find out. Especially, yeah, especially when you lose... You're going to lose Ruckert this year. You want yeah. to get, you want to get a little bit more experience in here. I mean, big guy, six six, two thirty five, a really good size tight end there, and I, I think he would fit really well within this Ohio State um, offensive scheme. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, we all still right. like the we, we we love the guys over at the scoop. Well, we like most of the guys over at the scoop, Kabuto. All right. It's all good. All right, Jared, let's talk about the the Buckeyes and Penn State game that happened um, a few nights ago here. Ohio State, Ohio State beat beat Penn State 76 to 64. And it was and it wasn't a game where it had to heavily rely on um EJ Liddell, which by the way, EJ didn't didn't lead the team in points here. It was really led in by the sharp shooting Kyle Young. <laughs> Four for four from beyond the arc there. Crazy. Crazy how that was. <laughs> but yeah, no, like, yeah, yeah, Kyle Young is, is what Jared brought up. Um um he he had had some good moments there. Um 
Arns had a good had a good game too. Like all of these other other players, um, other than Liddell, really showed up in this game here. Which is not to say Liddell didn't show up. For the record, it was it was absolutely Penn State's game plan early on to crowd the paint and keep Liddell and Zed Key away from the hoop. Uh, they were going to force Ohio State to win it on the outside, and uh, yeah. and, and they over did. Half of their, over half of their shots were behind the three point line. Yeah, and Penn State forced that to happen, and mm-hmm. you know. L- I don't want to say luckily for Ohio state because they were the ones making the shots, but Ohio state was making, was making the shots. Um, you know, by the way, not, not just was, uh, EJ Liddell, not the leader in points in this game. EJ Liddell, uh, also not the leader in minutes of this game that went to Jamari Wheeler. Uh, you know, why, why not let the former Penn state kid <laughs> who, by the way, was getting booed, Every single time he touched the ball, like loudly booed every time he touched the ball, uh, played for 37 minutes in this game, which for anyone playing at home is almost all of them. Um, Didn't have a great game offensively as far as points goes, uh, but he did pick up nine assists and uh, five rebounds on the day, stole the ball three times, uh, was a huge concern contributor from an assist standpoint and from a defensive standpoint in this game yeah no this was this was a definitely a great game for all of the other playmakers for Ohio State to really come out and sh- and um make a name for themselves here it was, it was a great great showing for for everybody here yeah uh Michi uh Michi Johnson had a really good game uh picked up eight points in only fifteen minutes on the court uh two for two from behind the arc um i this was a game like Penn State uh got close a few times you know how it is sometimes the team's winning by ten or so points maybe fifteen points and the other team rallies maybe shrinks the lead down to maybe six or so points. But, you know, then the rally runs out of steam and that that's what this game was. That's this was one of those yep. games. Ohio State established themselves pretty early on with a decent lead that they had to maintain and keep, you know, keep going. But. A a lead that they, you know, you know what I'm trying to say here, right? Uh, it was a lead that they, for the most part, maintained the entire game. Yeah. And by the way, fix their free throw problems. They did, yeah. They shot eighty three percent from from the charity line. There, definitely much much better than than the previous games here. Uh, so the next games here, as we're recording here, starting in about fifteen minutes or so, Ohio State playing Towson Tigers, and then and then following that, Ohio State will be playing. I believe that it's this Saturday. I believe. Good luck yeah, to Buda. This Saturday they they get to play Wisconsin, and then next week, Jared, the following following Saturday, the eighteenth, they get to take on the Wildcats of Kentucky. There you go. Hey, I'm just. Can, what would it mean if Ohio State could take down two separate blue bloods in the same year? I mean, is as, as far who are like the premier and I'm not, I don't, we're not, we're not pulling out the tier list. We don't have time for that. But if, but if we're naming like the five blue bloods in college basketball, Duke and Kentucky are probably in that five, right? I I would say, I would say probably the, your, your blue bloods top five. Don't, don't, don't go too far. You're only allowed to give me five. Okay, so I would say, I would say, Kentucky. Yeah. North Carolina Duke. North Carolina Duke. Mm-hmm. You have to put you have to put UCLA in there. I realize that that's not Man, super that's, that's, current, yeah. but they were dominant in their time. Um, what about what about UConn? UConn's in the discussion. We're, we're, we're not as good at Sparty? talking about. Or Sparty? Sparty's in the discussion. There, uh, Buckeye Zach says Duke, Kentucky, Kansas. We forgot about Kansas, Kyle. 
Yep, uh, Kansas, North yep. Carolina and Villanova. So I think I think if you're going to go with like most wins if, for um, for national titles and all that, it's, it's UCLA, it's Kentucky, Indiana, UNC, Duke, Indiana. and Kansas. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like Duke. I feel like Duke, Kentucky. I feel, I'm going to go with like Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, North Carolina, and in, I have to give the historical nod to to UCLA. I think UCLA. Yeah. Uh, but but I feel like there's a lot of discussion, a lot of argument that I think could take place for that fifth spot. But I do think the four spots, like if we, if we reduce it to a, a Mount Rushmore situation, Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, North Carolina. I'm just saying, knock off two of those teams in one year, it'd be fun. Mm-hmm. All right, anything else, Jared? I'm getting a vote from Kabuto for Michigan State. I mean, they're they're right there. They're yeah. right there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, don't don't get me wrong. This is a a discussion that probably deserves a larger uh point a, a larger discussion than we have time for today. So we're just sort of rushing through it. But, uh, oh, yeah, uh, Syracuse, Louisville uh, belong in the conversation at the very least, as does Indiana belong in the conversation. Um, yeah, a lot of teams belong in the conversation. But again, this requires more yeah. time than we have. <coughs> Excuse me. Kyle, uh, is it time for some Ask Sloopcast questions? Sure thing. Kabuto, uh, a new um, Sloop Cat. Sloop Cat. Is a new sloop cat here. So welcome, Kabuto. Uh, asks, should the two Big Ten division winners act as captains and draft their division for the next year, with a champion getting the first two picks? He said he um, this idea was stolen from a Reddit post. Okay. This is first. This is funny. I'm just just acknowledging that this is funny. Um. <laughs> What what do you do in that situation if you are the coach? Do you try and load up with good teams or do you try and load up your schedule with cupcakes? With Rutgers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know how much of a cupcake I think you can, I think there are more cupcake more cupcakey cupcakes than Rutgers in the Big Ten right now. Than Northwestern. Yeah, North, Northwestern's on a side. I feel like I, I, knowing nothing about who I was bringing back, I feel like I was going to be bad next year only because they very rarely put together two really good seasons in a row. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it, it's definitely it's definitely interesting, but yeah, I, I see what you're saying here. Do you want to load up with a, a solid schedule or do you want right. almost guaranteed wins? Yeah, and, and then also you know, theoretically an auto birth into the big 10 championship game, but also mm -hmm. a season that, you know, if you have to, you know, are you fourth or are you fifth in the college football playoff? Maybe that week schedule hurts you. Um, it's an interesting conversation. I think ultimately, I think you have to take the wins though. Right. Yeah. I think so too. Or better yet, Jared, get rid of divisions. Well, yeah, that that's that's how we take it. Kuyuna uh, <laughs> says, or a good Big Ten champ opponent. You know, that's a good point. If you load up the other, they're they're all going to beat the hell out of each other, but they're also all going to get better on the other divisional side. No, that which is why the East keeps winning the Big Ten because you have to be really good to win the Big Ten East. You just have to be. Yep. Uh, here, here's a good question for you, Jared. You ready for this one? Duncan asks us. What have you done today to beat the team up north? I'm recording a podcast in which I'm talking about Ohio State recruiting. <laughs> no com, yeah, dude, Kabuto, you you know we're anti conference. <laughs> we're anti division. We're anti conference. We're we're anti amateurism. <laughs> we're, we're, we're the anti-podcast here. And what have I done? Well, as you can probably see here, Jared, just, just like you, Jared, yeah. a lot of, a lot of scarlet in, in the room, a lot of gray in the room. 
that that that's it just general scarlet and grayness mm -hmm. yes okay i don't think we have any blue except for your shirt jared um <laughs> it's blue on. earth and it literally <laughs> uh, mirrors it's all ohio <laughs> well it's all ohio and it always has been all right i'll i'll, I'll let that one pass yeah yeah all right buckeye buckeye zach um Hmm. <laughs> um, uh, Kabuto go, go, said, go, go, uh, go, go, go ahead and read it. It's fine. All right. Buckeye Zach says, is there any way we, the soup cats can help you bring Tom, Tony and Kevin over? <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you don't know, we're leaving Buckeye scoop uh, at the end of the year. We'll officially be independent on January 1st. Um, no, no hard feelings, especially to uh, the, the folks mentioned in, in Buckeye Zach's question. Still super friendly with, with Tom and Tony. We don't know Kevin all that well, but sure, super friendly there too, right? Um, but no, we're, we're, still, we're still friends. Uh, what can you do? Uh, uh, recruit a couple hundred more of you and pay us a lot of money. We... What, you you think do you do you really think especially without Mad Canadian do you really think we have higher people money? Kyle and I still have day jobs. Kyle and I are nowhere. <laughs> it's not even in the plans for Kyle and I not to have day jobs. Like that's not even in consideration. You think we have money to pay other people? We can't pay ourselves. <laughs> all right, and then Kabuto, <laughs> you, Kabuto, Kabuto with... flood the chat all you want, buddy. Kabuto with one last question, Jared. The 2022 class that's about to sign was mostly born in 2004. Why am I so old? Uh, because time zero only goes forward to, to reference BoJack Horseman. Uh, that's it. Uh, you're not getting younger. That's <laughs> nope. the point it is, is that you're not getting younger. Uh, Buckeye Zach uh, you, says, let's go backwards. I have a lot of complicated thoughts about uh, time travel and our perception of time, but we do not have time for that right now. Yep. Ironically. All right, Jared. That is all ask, the questions. We ask have. me during a shenanigans episode, and I, and I will talk to you about my theories of time travel. All right. That's all the questions we have today, Jared. Kabuto, that's the that's the question. I will literally spend an entire Patreon only podcast talking about the nature of time and our perception of it. Dare me to do it, and I will. <laughs> uh, Kyle, that's it. That's it for our show. Um, I want to encourage everyone if you're not if you're watching this on the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel, I'll reiterate it. Uh, we are leaving at the at the end of the year. We'll be posting exclusively on our own YouTube channel from here on from, from there on out. Uh, so if you, if you uh, watch us on the Buckeye scoop and you want to keep watching us, we have a YouTube channel. We've been double posting the episodes for a year for over a year. Um, so all of the episodes, this episode exists on both of those channels. But like I said, on January 1st, it's only we're only going to start posting on our channel. So if you want to keep listening to us, uh, make sure to search us up on YouTube. Uh, it's just Sloopcast. Search Sloopcast. You'll find us. Uh, and also, there will be one of those handy cards at the uh, end of this episode with a link. You can just click on that. Um, also, you can go to YouTube.thesloopcast.com and find our channel that way. Um, so just... Letting you know that, uh, it, but, but for, by, for the audio only listeners, nothing will change. Same old feed, same old feed, audio only listeners. You do not need to worry about a thing. We got you. Uh, YouTube people go find us on our, our new channel. That's not, not new. It's just that no one really knows it exists because <laughs> we, everyone watches us on the uh, Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel. So, like I said, make sure to give us a follow over there. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, Coach Fickle, Coach of the Year. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Second straight um, undefeated regular season for Coach Fickle, which is insane. Like, I don't care. We can talk about how challenging 
the American schedule is or isn't, but two straight regular season undefeated is insane. If you're thinking, yeah, oh, sure. Jared, Cincinnati lost last year. It was in it was in their conference championship game and not the regular yeah. season. You think you got one over on me? You didn't. Yeah, happy for Coach Fick. Really happy for him. But if we're talking about coaching awards, Kyle, um, Ohio State's new defensive coordinator was up for the Broyles, which is the top assistant coach in yeah. the country. He didn't win it. Uh, some some douchebag from some state up north won it, but. Uh, he, he was a finalist for the Broyles. <laughs> yeah. All right. And last thing here, Jared, um, quick thoughts about Ohio passing a, um, a bill to include, um, uh, sports betting that you, so you could bet online retail betting at casinos, stadiums, and bars. Yeah. Uh, we're getting sports gambling in Ohio. Um, I, it's, it's been passed through both of the houses. It hasn't been signed by the governor yet. Um, but I, I don't think anyone's anticipating that it won't be. So I think maybe by, yeah, I think, so I, I think it's supposed to, I don't know. I don't, I don't follow this, <laughs> this type of politics all that closely. Uh, and nor do we really want to talk about politics on the show, but it is a sports story. Uh, there will be sports betting, uh, in Ohio, it, it does appear, uh, and it's going to be pretty extensive as far as where and how you can, you can gamble. Uh, it should not be difficult to find. Um, I know as someone in the chat a while ago, I think it, uh, before we even started said something about it, maybe potentially affecting the outcomes of games, uh, mon the, the money that's already being spent on sports gambling knows no borders. So if, if you're worried about this, if you're worried about gambling in general and how that may or may not infringe on the integrity of sports, the fact that Ohio is allowing it when it's already been allowed in Las Vegas and New Jersey and other places, it's that, 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 that train's done left the station already. Mm -hmm. All right. That's it, Jared. That is it. All right. Uh, Kyle, that's the end of the episode on Monday. I played a band called heart attack man, uh, off of their new album. They released just about a month ago. Uh, and so I'm going to play another song. I like the first song. Maybe I'll like the second song. I know. I know. I like the second song. So, uh, stick around for that. Uh, audio only listeners. You don't have to do a thing. Just, just stay right where you are. Podcast people. You will have to click a link. If you want to, if you want to hear the music, uh, go ahead and click a link down in the show notes. Uh, it'll be pretty obvious. You can find it. You're a big boy or girl. You're a big they. Is that okay to say? I don't know. Um, no, not emo. You know, you guys keep asking. I'll, I'll start doing exclusively emo bands if that's what you want, Buck Isaac. So, uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Heart Attack Man. Mm -hmm.